Hi guys, it's yours truly, Musicless here. Hey, subscribers, it's Ethan here. Alright, this is this is it, buddy. Our last discussion video of the whole decade. Yup, the last discussion of the whole decade. So basically what we're talking about is what we like about the this decade or we dislike any topic. Pretty much. Except for, like all rules, rules no politics, period. Yup. Uh, but, yeah, so I guess we should start with really us meeting, meeting, me and Ethan have gone over, over these years, yes, as you guys know, we grew up bonding over video games, Hot Gold being the first one that me and Ethan really got a bond over, and, and ever since then, we've been growing. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very personally happy. Uh, that I got to meet Ethan because he's become one of my closest friends ever. Yup. And, and uh, oh, what were you gonna say, bud? And also, <laughs> of course, honestly, guys, way back in all that decade, way back in um, the, not not the last decade, two thousand nine. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about like beginning of the decade. Honestly, I do remember that. Is let's say I wasn't like the heart. I wasn't like a like you know attached to a Tendo and uh. Sony, I mean, yeah, I like some Sony games, but I wasn't, like, hardcoring the actual, actual, um, the company, because at the time, I wasn't fa falling too deep on all those things. Until later on, like, up to now, I do. Exactly. So, 2020, uh, to, uh, the 2010s really changed me even in terms of game. Game in a lot of ways. Not only did we meet, but we, like I said, we bonded over video games over time. So he and I grew up, uh, grew up a lot, lot thanks to the, this decade. So I want to thank this decade's games for really introducing uh, each other uh, and also just helping us bond and grow, grow, grow over the years, years together. Now, of course, of course, speaking of video games, games, this decade of games was absolutely amazing. There, of course, were some... Eh, they're okay. Some are okay. And then there were just some that made us just go... Like, seriously? Uh, but of course, of course, amongst those, there were great, great games. Uh, of course, the beginning of the decade, me and Ethan really didn't know that many great games existed. Honestly, to, uh, honestly, the first half of uh, uh, the 2010s, 10s, we honestly feel like we missed out on a lot of good stuff. Yeah, we did. But um, now, we've pretty much caught up with some of the modern day classics. Oh yeah, and pretty much we caught up like almost every games that we saw. And of course, back in the time, we didn't know almost every um, almost every few game franchises. But there's some of me and MC will still do not know. So yeah, like I said. If you guys have any recommendations, if you guys have any, like, you know... Series, me and Ethan should look into this next decade or in 2020. Let us know in the comments below. Oh, we're always open to suggestions. It could be underrated games that we don't know. We do not know. That's alright. Or maybe a spin-off in the series that me and Ethan already know about. Right. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, now I will say out of the two, I will more than likely know what you guys are talking about. Out since, well... No offense to Ethan, he's very educated on games, but he's still learning the knowledge. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I gotta say this decade of games was probably one of the best decades ever, ever for gaming, in my personal opinion. Um, just because of all the good stuff that came out. Now, of course, while I was talking individually about each company, we gotta start with the big guys, Nintendo, since they were basically my roots. Right. And they were the ones that helped Ethan go. So, well, I guess we should talk about each year, year and how it went, as well as the systems that came out. So, this decade brought us the Wii all the way to, well, obviously, the Nintendo Switch. Yep. So, and, well. He's got the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Lite. Yeah, this mini, mini bad boy. So, yeah. Um, from the Wii, uh, from the Wii all the way to the Nintendo Switch. So I guess we should talk about our opinions for the day, 
for the uh, for this whole decade. So obviously the Wii was before this deck, uh, before the end of this deck. Uh, before the beginning of this decade. Yep. But because it did get leaked, uh, because it still kept going even after that, that um, I figured we should still talk about it because it was still within the 2000s. Yes. Um, uh, well, 2010s. So, um, gotta say, we played some good games on the Wii, right, bud? Yeah, several games that we missed, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, for example, Mario Strikers Charged. Oh, that was uh, one of the best games I remember back in my childhood. Of course, at the time, MC was like, at the time. And then I try to convince him to try it. And then when he tries it, he loves it. Yeah, I guess you can thank Ethan for that. <laughs> Speaking of sports games, uh, me and Ethan, I just got my second game file rental, as I mentioned before. Um, you guys know I already have Borderlands 3, but um, I also just got Mario Superstar Baseball for the GameCube, so I'm going to be giving that a try. Uh, reason is, you guys know that here on the channel, we're big Super Soccer fans. Not a good Wii game, by the way. Uh, but... The sequel was on GameCube, Superstar Baseball, and I've never played it for the life of me. I've seen gameplay, but I've always wondered how it feels to play with baseball with the GameCube controller, so... I mean, at the time, I did not know. When I was younger, I did not know there was a sequel for it. Once I get close, like, I think the last time I know about it was, like, eh, within a, probably last year or two years ago. Who knows? Yeah, so this will be my first hands-on experience with Superstar ba Baseball. If you guys have any recommendations for you, those who have played the game, let me know in the comments below. It would be really appreciated. But I've seen enough gameplay that I think I got this under one under control. But you never know. You never know. I might struggle. And I, this one's going to be a little harder because I'm, I'm so used to swinging the Wii Remote when it comes to, you know, bats. Yep. So, <laughs> it's going to be a feel a little different, but hey, it's stuff that I can't get used to. That's true. Um, Let me see, what are the Wii games? Oh, obviously, Galaxy. Oh, yeah, Super Mario, you mean Super Mario Galaxy games? Oh, yeah. Galaxy 2 is my personal favorite. Even likes Galaxy 1 better. Yeah, I mean, out of those two, I mean, hey, 2 looks cool with a Yoshi, but, you know, there's just some nostalgic thing about it, but, uh, you know, you see... I miss those great, uh, some Nintendo games way back in the day. Yeah, def definitely. We was definitely one of the greatest consoles. Of course, Pokemon Battle Revolution. Oh, I mean, I used to love it. Wait, we used to love it, right? Yeah, yeah. We used to love it, like, when I first played the game. I used to love it. And then I know I look back again, and in the, between the several games, I was like, What? What? <laughs> I think I'm more liking uh, Pokemon XD much better than the Battle Evolution. Anyways, out of those. Yeah, but Battle Evolution is still a great game game on its own, of course. Of course, I still love it very much. Although, I will say it has shown its age pretty badly. All I can hope for is, hopefully, uh, Tendo come up with another idea like those types of games. Like Pokemon Battle Evolution, Pokemon XD, and Coliseum type of style. Hopefully they find that kind of type of style on the Nintendo Switch on the, this next decade. Yes, definitely. I would love to see something like, uh, something like that. Uh, but um, let me see. Is there any other? Oh, there's one more. Uh, well, actually two. Exil Bay Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get started with that. Okay, so about Exil Bay Chronicles, not X or 2. We'll get to those later. Okay, okay. So... Let's just say, you want to know how I got introduced to that series and I got introduced to that character? Okay, so first time when the Super Smash Bros. was, you know, about to come out in uh, 3DS and Wii U. So, let's say, people are requesting, they're like, hey, we want Shulk in there. Hey, he's he's got to be a good character in there. We want him in there. So I was like, who is Shulk? Who is he? And then I found out, when he got in Smash Bros., he got in, and I gave it a little research and all that. And then when I saw some gameplay, I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a try. So I finally gave it a try. I got the game through GameStop. But, yeah, uh, by the way, GameStop had this one exclusive to them. Nintendo, seriously. Yeah, Global Chronicles Definitive Edition better be available than more than just GameStop, or you're going to be written and repeating this again. Oh, let's hope not. <laughs> but, I mean, but, I mean, yes, yes, I do remember that time. 
you want to know how much I got that for that one final coffee in that place? Yes, the final coffee. I thought I remember it was between either 70 or $80. I try to remember that. You said 80 80 yeah. So, yeah, it cost Ethan about $80. Just for that single game. As you guys know, that's how most special editions for digital cost. Usually around that price. Especially digital, uh, di digital deluxe edition. So, he even paid about the price of that. And that wasn't even big back in the day, so. But, of course, tell him why you, uh, tell him that he ends up, you know. Love it. Okay, so, let's just say, after I play the game all the way through, I started to see why people love him so much. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering at the beginning, and I'm like, Oh, that game looks cool. I love it. <laughs> of course, MC doesn't like Shulk and all that. Not about the story, but more like the one character. Yeah. Personally, I think Fiora should have been the main character. Sorry, Shulk, can't either. Shulk, like us. I have nothing against the character. Character, he's cool and all, but I just cannot take his quotes. Because they drive me out the wall. Apologies. Apologies. Please do not hate me. <laughs> I bet. Uh, but other than that, though, Xenoblade was definitely one of those definitely classics. And of course, we can't forget the album. Yeah, we gotta figure out which. Okay, file below, but that one. Yeah, that would be. Okay, but the fir but the first game I played was on the 3DS. Are uh, you talking about like um, Path of Ra uh, Radiant Dawn or something? Uh, Ra Radiant Dawn, yes. We're gonna go in order, regardless of when we, you know, first Yeah, right, up. right, yeah. So, guys. Bomb, ra Fire, Fire Boom, Radiant Dawn isn't my first Fallen game. Just a warning. Isn't my first game. For those who are new to the channel. Better, uh, anybody who's been a long time Go Gamer fans obviously knows what Ethan's first game is. But uh, for that, uh, for newbies, no, that is not Ethan's first game. That's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah. Anyways, continue on. Okay, with that game, Radiant Dawn. So basically, that game is actually a sequel from Fire Boom, Path of Radiance. That's when Hi Ike, which is you guys know from Super Smash Bros. You should know who he is. Let's say, let's say he start off his own his own adventure when when you know who died. So okay, about that game. Okay, so I'll tell you something. That game, I'll tell you something. That game, somewhat intense. Somewhat intense. This is coming from an RPG who's played a lot of RPGs this decade. That's probably still one of the most intense RPGs that I've heard Ethan say. It's still probably one of the hardest to date. Heck, even the final boss gave him a struggle. Oh, it did. You know why? I don't like the part, like, you have to attack all those clones around, around them. It's like a square area. It's like you have to attack almost everybody, every area. And before you get to the middle, you have to strike that boss in the middle. Should have said spoiler. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, spoiler warning for those who haven't played it. Uh, anyways, ways I'll be sure to put a picture above, above so that way next time Ethan says it without warning, you know. But either way, it is indeed one of Ethan's probably hardest Fallen games to date. Not to mention uh, probably one of the coolest. And, of course, uh, Ike is one of Ethan's personal favorite characters, so yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah. Okay, so DS-wise, which is the handheld that came along with the Wii, as I said, me and Ethan bonded over that, uh, 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 Hot Gold. That was literally the first game that he and I connected on an emotional level and a friendship level with. Yep. Back in the day, he used to call, uh, he used to call, he used to call me his senpai. Hmm. I don't get. I still don't get to this day why he calls me, but I'm more the, learning more from him than he is from me. me well, nowadays. that's just back in the day, guys. Not now. Back in the day, he meant back in the day. Yeah, when me and Ethan were still in high school. Uh, I mean, middle school, pardon. Yep. Uh, but um, yeah. Uh, obviously, Hot Gold is one of my personal favorites. Still is. Yep. Uh, uh, and. You know, I really like, like the game. Of course, personally, another game from the DS that I really love is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Grew up with that game, personally. Uh, I will say, though, 
Primal Dialga! Anybody who has played that game all the way through has probably faced Primal Dialga. That thing literally cleaned me, I think, about 300 times. I'm not even lying, and I counted. Yes, for someone at that young of age, I counted all those times I got one through that boss. 300 on the dot! I, I bet you if it takes 300 tries, I bet you it takes a couple days to beat it. Yo, it took me actually about three, uh, three or months. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's even worse. Well, in fairness, I didn't really have a good combo. My combo was Pikachu and Turtwig. Obviously, you know why I like Pikachu. For those who don't know, Pikachu is my top number one favorite Pokemon of all time. So, obviously, I choose that one. But Turtwig was my first starter ever in Pokemon Hot Gold and Soul, uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and Platinum. Oh, yeah. So, you could probably guess that was probably the worst combination I could ever come up with. That being said, <laughs> this is the reason why it took me that long. Dang, you guys are tough. Ugh. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so for me, though, of course, I did play Diamond Pro before. That was before I played Heart Gold. But uh, that was because I had my new friends at the time. I was younger, of course. That was, that was when, that was like a little closer attachment to the Pokemon at the time. So, I mean, I still love Heart Gold myself. And of course, I still remember my first starter is Chikorita. That was my first starter and actually my first ever play my own Pokemon game. Yep. Yep, definitely. Of course, let's help from yours, Chili. Uh, now, of course, growing up, we didn't play that much other games outside of Pokemon. We did play some Mario Kart DS here and there. Um, but, um, uh, mainly Pokemon for the most part for both of us. So, moving on from that, we played the next two installments. Don't hate us, Pokemon fan base. This is our opinion! Pokemon Black and White and Black 2 and White 2. Yep. Which, uh, by the way, great Games. I don't care what anybody says. They're great games. Yep. I, it comes from me too. What do you think I got that? That got that end symbol on my main. <laughs> yeah. What do you think you got? Got it. Uh, just out of nowhere? Of course not. Even to the character, one of even favorite characters from the Black and White series, and really in general for Pokemon, is N. So that's why you got the even N. Get it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Black and White, wonderful games with great stories. Great music. Or even great team, honestly. I feel like the team music is just, man, stands out better than almost any other, any other, uh, t the team themes. Of course, of course, I don't judge about the other classic ones, because some classic, uh, like, teams have good themes, like Galactic, Rocket, they, they got good themes. Yeah, but, uh, co uh, but, of course, we'll get to the other opinion about a certain team theme. I'm pretty sure you mean if, uh, you, uh, you mean if and I've mentioned a couple times in this channel that we cannot stand. <laughs> but, honestly, Black and White and Black 2 and White 2 are underrated gems. If you have never tried them and are skeptical to, don't be. Oh, and by the way, if you guys hate the designs of the Pokemon in that gen... Oh, come on. Not all of them are that terrible. What even the starters? The starters are actually cool. Well, except for one certain starter, though. Yes. Uh, the of you lane can brush, uh, brush off, but I like Emboy, personally. Mine is either all oh, three of those evolutions, like Ashuai, Diwat, and Samurott. Those are the good evolution list. But it is for Snivy and all the all those evolutions... They're okay. Probably the only one out of this whole decade that me and Ethan could probably say that we kind of dislike like the most out of all the glass daughters. Uh, but again, that's just our opinion. Yeah, it is our opinion. Yeah, yeah. Black 2 and White 2, they made the music much better. Except for the team. But the team, I, I'm not too upset about it, you know? Yeah, team team is okay in Black 2 and White 2, but other than that, it's still pretty good. Yep. Uh, but yeah, one of my uh, it is one of my personal favorite Pokemon games for the DS, and I would definitely go back and play it if we ever got a remake in the future. Yep. Fingers crossed. We gonna get it. Uh, but um, yeah. So now moving on to. 
a somewhat kind of decent era for medium football games. Yes. The Phidias and you? the Wii U. Now, don't get us wrong. Me and Ethan love the games from the Wii U, except for Smash. No offense, so Smash Smash is still good because it introduced a whole bunch of characters, but even even besides that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did introduce us almost like a couple characters, honestly. But even besides that, they can like Ultimate better. Yes, yes, yes. Ultimate is definitely better. Of course, later on we'll talk about that. But right now we're talking about the games or the three is that me and MC like. So, video say, uh, sheesh, where do we even begin? Oh, I think this is when we start our own adventure of more games and our adventure and stuff. Okay, so, how do I start? I do know one thing, though. I can tell you the story. Right now, how I got my 3DS. Okay, so, let's I'll go ahead and tell. Just not too long, but just a little bit. Okay? Alright, so I do remember the time I had that friend. You know, I, you guys saw the video. Uh, those of you who are in this channel, you guys should know what I'm talking about. If you guys see my uh, vacation blog up there on the couple of like, years, like 2018 or... Oh, wait, wait, wait. 2018 and this year, too, so... If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, watch those videos. This is part of the story. So, Matt Friend, who is in New Jersey, that's the one I met. And at the time, I do remember this. I remember I was back in, like, in a uh, freshman or something. I remember the time that I was able to, to get that black original 3DS with my own money. And I also got Mario Kart something along with it. That is my first 3DS game. I'm like the only one of all the people I know who got the 3DS first. I thinking I could be wrong, but who knows? But I'll say this though, I do remember one thing though that was in the best. After that, my dad was not happy about what I did with with that part. He was really ticked off about the whole thing. Yeah. That I do remember. Don't blame Ethan on that, but I, if you are wondering my opinion on Mario Kart 7, I'm sorry, guys. Guys, there's a lot of distaste towards some of the fan favorites. Uh, I can't help it. It's just something about Mario Kart 7. I just... No, I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's just bad to be, Okay. I mean, th I mean, they did bring back like a Mario Kart DS features and stuff like battle mode and stuff. But at least I like. It. I mean, there, of course I have. Of course I we have, I have one Mario Kart Civically version I dislike the most. But it's gonna be next after we talk about the 3DS. Yes. So and note we like the port version of this game better than the actual one. But anybody who knows who we're implying, and I'm pretty sure you know which Mario Kart we're talking about, but for those who are new to both Nintendo and in general, you'll find out in a minute. Yup. Uh but yeah, so um, but yeah, there's so many series that we were introduced during the 3DS era that's not even funny. Oh yeah, not even funny. Uh, like for example, yeah, you know how I even mentioned earlier that there was a problem game that he first played? It was Problem Awakening. On the 3DS. So, after playing a little bit... If you don't mind, I tell the sure. story. Uh, so after playing a little bit of Brawl, Ethan was curious about the Fire Emblem series. So he decided I had to play the latest installment, which was Fire Emblem Awakening, which, fun fact, yeah. uh, if it weren't for that game in the series, we wouldn't have the somewhat so-so in our opinion fates, the Great Echoes, the Chaos Heroes, the, sum, uh, uh, the Great but roster-wise, not so great, Fire Warriors, and the super excellent Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, Fire Weekend was actually my first Fire game in history I played. That's when I got introduced. I actually played the demo, the demo of it first. I played it almost constantly on the demo. I'm like, okay, that's it. I gotta get that game. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, he's been a long-time fan of him, and, of course, from... Which you obviously know. No, it's Ethan's top number one favorite Fire Emblem character of all time. Oh, yeah. 
Speaking of which, which, just a heads up guys, as per usual with the new year, me and Ethan have brand new banners and logos, but we'll talk about that near the end of this video. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so Awakening was definitely one of the first games. Of course, I don't think we need to go over Fates again because we've gone over that a million times on this channel. Of course, of course, if those of you who don't know what we're talking about, if you're new, go ahead. Uh, well, me and MC will figure out which video we we whenever we said about it. We could just put it this put it in tag up there somewhere for you guys. Yep. Uh, of course, if you got uh, if not, then me and Ethan will be Ethan will probably definitely mention it in his least favorite games of all time video, which we will post at some point in the future. Right. Uh. Well, we post for those who watch the original. But uh, yeah. So definitely one of mine and Ethan, uh, definitely one of the games that Ethan forced me to get into the series in. <laughs> well, same with you in that one series. <laughs> Dang it. I hate it when he's right. But besides side of that. But yeah, seriously though. No. No. Uh Final Awakening I don't think it's worth for that game game. Heck, Ethan will probably wouldn't even be into the series, so I guess you owe uh, he owes a lot to that game in particular. And now another f another fact, if those of you do not know, originally Final Awakening was about to be the last Fallen game in history. It weren't for the good sales. Or even me got into this series. Same fact. And it's a crazy one. I know. Um, several other series that it got us into is, um, well, you guys probably know the history of me. I got into Sonic Heroes, so that was back in the GameCube. But I did play on my friend's GameCube to do that, so just a little story on that. But uh, um, I, at the time, I was still growing as a Sonic fan, so... Obviously, we will get into that a little bit later because I didn't play most of the more so modern Sonic games until much, much, much later, later in the Wii U era, and much, much, much later, later after the near the start of the Switch and near the end of the 3DS era. So, yes. So uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but um, yeah. So honestly, Lee, uh, that is definitely one of the games that me and Ethan hope. That people will continue to play while the 3DS is still around. It still is available physically and digitally, obviously, on uh, for you guys to play. So be sure to look around to find it. Because yes. 3DS games are starting to get a little air here. Yep. And now, after we all talk about the 3DS, guess we'll talk about the Wii U more. Okay, okay. At the time, let's be honest here. Me and MC, we used to love the Wii U. We used to. Yes. Uh, but I haven't talked about my 3DS experience yet. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but before we get into that, um, I probably have the most games. I think I have over 300 games on my 3DS that I still have yet to beat. And I've only beat, say, think about, including Pokemon games, 15 of them. Oh, and also with the Sonic games, right? Two. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, yeah. Um, and the Star Savvy series was one of the series I was introduced thanks to the 3DS, which I'm hoping for a Switch installment, so please, please. And I did play some turning on the 3DS myself. That was my first experience. And I'm glad I like the trilogy and the newer Ace Attorneys. I hope for a new Ace Attorney game. And on Nintendo Switch. Indeed, buddy. Indeed, I am so excited. For those who want to play the first three, three. If you want Ethan's opinion, real quick. All right, I'll tell you right right ahead. Um, the first one, mm, good start. Good start. That's a good start for me. And then music was nostalgic for people who love it. Second Ace Attorney, the 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 testimony theme. Pew! Get that away from me. Yeah, Ethan's not a big fan of the testimony theme. He cannot stand to hear it. Ah, man, it's so disgusting. <laughs> Don't ask. Let's, yeah, you can get to take a listen to yourselves. That's fine. Defin but, definitely, but I'm not going to put Ethan through the torture of listening to it again because I don't think he can stand it. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. And the third one? Uh, yeah, the third one is actually... Much interesting, if you ask me. Way much interesting, because, little spoiler, 
at the beginning, that shows Phoenix is past, pretty much. That's all we're going to say without spoiling it. Uh, but, yeah. So, if you want China Trilogy, a course is available on Phoenix. Yes, but if you And the Switch, right? And the Switch, and the PlayStation, and the Xbox, as well as, I think, PC, too? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But, yes, it is available on all those platforms. If you want to play the rest of the trilogy, they're still stuck on Phoenix, but you can play um, the third installment, I mean, fourth installment, which is... Uh, and it, oh, of course, I tried... Oh, there's a DS, but th that's going to be harder to grab. I managed to grab it on um, the 3DS digitally. And I suddenly loved it more than those the originals. No offense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's the fifth and the sixth installment. Of course, Ethan loves the sixth installment of Ace Attorney, but he's not going to spoil why. Yeah, let's say... Let's say I do, like... Ace Attorney 4, which is Ace Attorney Apollo Justice, in second place, my personal opinion. And then the first one is Sphere of Justice, the latest installment. Yeah, because it... Okay, again, we're not going to say why. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's, it, it is a good game. Yeah, that's all I can tell you without spoiling, spoiling any details. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, so the video's got us into a lot of series. Um, now we can talk about... <sighs> oh, yeah. As Ethan said earlier, we're going to be honest, we both used to love the Wii U. I won't get to reason why after we talk about the games first. Okay, so, obviously, Nintendo Land, number one best game, party game ever. That's one of the best games, I know. Honestly, we should, I would have taken a part of that over one, two, trash for this, you know, which system. Yup. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's a great game, it's a great game, personally, if you haven't played it, what are you doing? Doing, it's awesome! Okay, let's see, there should be another game I remember I first played, oh yeah, Sumayo 3D World, that was one of the good games I remember. I totally took a part of that, that, not that you need more of them, Nintendo, what you're saying. Uh, yeah, that is one uh, I want too, personally. Uh, uh, that I love too. In fact, even got that with his Wii U. Yup, I did. So, pretty awesome. <laughs> um, of course, uh, there's, there's other games I know. Hey, how about this one? The first game we're going to talk about is the first ever shoot game we actually like. Splatoon. Splatoon. Of course, Splatoon. I remember the time, me and MC, at the time. We actually got the game for our high school graduation. Exactly. And it is a great shooter series, mind you. Splatoon 2 is probably one of the better installment, installments. Well, at least in terms of story and plot. But yeah. The weapons! Don't get, me, don't get me anything started on that. That's a whole... Uh, we and Ethan have discussed that previously on the channel, so if you want to check that video out, I'll be sure to do so. But, uh, long story short, let's just say... I prefer Splatoon 1 over Splatoon 2 in terms of weapons. Yup. I hope Splatoon 3 is better than... The first two, yes. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, though, it is definitely one of the better shooter series. <laughs> Yup, I mean, yes, cause the cause the Call of Duty series, eh, it was good in the past. I I I remember playing them, but then after that, like in Black Ops Two, <laughs> went downhill. Yep, yeah, that's Ethan's personal opinion, though. Uh, so yeah, definitely one of the good. Uh, better system. Uh, systems from what I've been here, here hearing, but I definitely want to. Take a deeper look into it. Uh, take a deeper look into um, some more of uh, Splatoon at one point or the other once the next installment comes out. Yeah. Uh, Splatoon one is still going online. Line if you want to buy it. Or wait, wait. There's not that much support for it anymore, but the is the is the online is still going as long as the Wii U is still going. So yeah. Uh, also, if you haven't played the latest installment of Splatoon two, it is available. Like I said, on Nintendo Switch yep. for you guys to try. Uh, and if you want to, you can buy the DLC pack for it uh, called the Octo Expansion. And if you beat that story, uh, extra story, you get to use Octolines. Yep. The story, the game, game for both Splatoon one and two will explain it more in detail. Uh, but um, yeah, 
that's a pretty cool uh, little add-on for Nintendo. Yep. Um. Hmm. Okay, we talked Splatoon. I sure should be other games I know we can talk about in this channel. Um. Oh, another game. Xenoblade Chronicles X. I could definitely discuss with you this game. At first, I was skeptical. Yep, I, uh, you know, you know how I told you early, uh, earlier in some videos that Ethan had to convince me to play Pokémon. Well, this is what I had to convince Ethan to play. <laughs> that happened to me too, because Shulk fanboy. If I was skeptical to try it, then I said. I'm saying, give it a whirl, give it a whirl, give it a whirl. Well, it's not always going to be the case, you know. And I did give it a whirl at the time. That was at the time, guys. I was a little stubborn. Yeah, but he did eventually try it, just like he got me to play Pokémon. And fun fact, he's kind of mixed on it. Yeah, let's just say the story was kind of, what? Of course, the final boss battle. <laughs> That's the one, actually, the hardest boss I faced. The hardest one. No offense, it's actually harder than Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. If, oh, no, no, no. Radiant Dawn comes from me. He is not wrong about that, and I was there to see his final boss, so I can vote for him. I'm saying it was probably one of the hardest bosses I've seen him take down. Ooh, Lexar, I remember. Yeah, Lexar, that's his name. That, I mean, I gotta give a credit to those who created Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is, you know what company, right? Yep, Microsoft. Yeah, I give them credit. At least they're trying their best to make it some of it original, but uh, not enough for me to say I love the most. I'm sorry. That's Ethan's opinion. Don't hate him. He has nothing against the characters or anything. It's just personally prefers it. Yup. Uh, uh, he prefers Xenoblade 1 over X and Two, which we will talk about later. Yep. Uh, let me see what else. Um, Tokimaru Sections. Oh yeah. Which is, if this video comes out at midnight, comes out this month, if not next month, uh, depending on when this video goes up. Uh, and Ethan and I are looking forward to it again, uh, by it again because it's a great game. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, I know. It's like a combination of. Fire Emblem and Simakachi Tensei, and then some people say it's like Persona. Well, yes, some mechanics are like Persona, but Persona, per in general, fun fact, Persona is actually not the main series to the X uh, Atlas, but it's a side, it's a side series. Yeah, bet you didn't know that. <laughs> Fun fact there. Um, but, um, yeah. So, tell me my sections, sections if you haven't checked it out. Well, you can either check out on the Wii U, or you can play the later version. Yeah, yeah. which is going to come out in right around when the video comes out. Like, say, New Year's, which is whenever it comes comes out, <laughs> the video. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, definitely, either next month if it's still in 2019, or this month if it's in 2020. Yup. But, uh, yeah, so this is something that you should definitely check out. Yup, and personally, I like it, of course. It may be not my favorite of found games. I don't know, I should count it as a found game, because, you know, of course, they put found references, but I don't know if I count it like actual found game. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair one. That's a fair one. Of course, uh, no console will be complete without games we dislike, and there's one in particular that me and Ethan did not like on that system at all. Mm-mm. Mario Maker 1. Ugh. I'm still upset at Nintendo for making a sequel. Yeah, I personally don't like it. I'm sorry, guys. Guys, if you like building your own levels, that's all fine by me, but... Not from us, man. I mean, I'll play for the channel, but that's about it. Side. I I just don't like it that much. Yep. Let's see, there should be other things we talk about, or if not, we can just, just talk about like how we started just like Wii U. Uh I think that's really about it. I mean we talk about Smash, but that's probably been done to death. <laughs> uh, what about that? No, I'll get to that later. 
later, once we talk, talk more about, once we get to the modern day era of Sonic. Ah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and tell them why we dislike the Wii U. Alright, so, now, uh, don't get, now, give us credit, we were blind fanboys at the time, but, reason why we dislike the Wii U, go ahead. Alright, so let's just say we found out that people actually dislike the Wii U because Tendo is actually putting a lot of advertisements only for kids and stuff. It's not like that. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't put advertising for teenagers and adults. Well, let's say Tendo has trouble with, with the advertisements and stuff. And since then, when me and MC found out the reputation was that bad... That's when we start hating the Wii U, because of that. And I look back, when we were up to like, I don't know what year, Trevor, you know what year it was, either 2015 or 16. That's when I look back and I dislike it. Yep, yep definitely, definitely. Of course, I don't think I need to say anything about 2015 in particular, because that was the year that Fates made it into the, you know, what awards and... 2016, actually. 16, I mean. mean, and it... Lost. Of course, this year, you guys know it won, but that's beside the point. Yeah, let's say at the time that I was like a diehard Fun fan that I wanted to actually have people actually see the game series is not the terrible series that people know. And just give it a chance for once. Yeesh. And nowadays it seems like the Final Fiasas did the job, so I think think that I think the Final Four here is done for the time being. Yes. Uh, but yeah, let's just say Ethan was so upset over that that he literally came over to my house crying. Yup. Uh, but um, yeah. So that's the reason why we hate the Wii U. And now let's talk about the later system, obviously. The Nintendo Switch. Now you guys probably kn know this because I tweeted on Twitter. Um, but, fun fact, me and Ethan stayed out on the cold for two to three hours, until my dad got coats for us, for the Nintendo Switch. Yes. We're totally doing it again. Now, what? that was actually our first ever lunch day get our new console. And, uh, Xbox is going to be my second lunch day console. <laughs> uh... That is, if I get enough money to save up for it before it comes out this ne uh, by next holiday. But yeah, um, but beside the point, point, or, of course. Well, I'm a little upset, you Nintendo, that you thought that uh, Fast on Next was Ethan's first game on the Switch. Actually, if the uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is actually my first game. Come on. Seriously. Uh, of course, two years later, later, Switch is still going strong with so many games. Oh, yeah, or even a lot of good third-party support. Oh, yes. I mean, if I told you that all of this was going to be on Nintendo Switch, which, and you guys said, nah, I don't believe you, you guys probably would have had your mind blown, mind blown by how like me and Ethan would have been. Yes, but that's because back in the Wii U era, of course, a lot of the, some of those companies are just don't think the system will run so well. But now, the Switch is the most interesting thing that people saw. That's how the company, the some companies, the third-party companies, actually feel like, hey, let's give it a chance. Put it on there. So, look at how many third parties we get now. Exactly. Of course, of course people are worried that with the upcoming PlayStation 5 and the Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series, Series X. X. Yeah, I know. Come on, guys. You don't, I'm not going to lie when I say I'm going to have to get used to that, but you guys have to gotta come up with a better name. That's even worse than the Wii U, I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. But uh, other than that, though, all seriousness, the Switch has been one of the best systems I've probably ever picked up from Nintendo, period. i played so many games on it. In fact, I have a whole stack, stack right next to my bed. Yes. Uh, and, uh, I would bring it down here, but I don't feel like reorganizing, so I'm just gonna post a picture of it, uh, of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's how many Switch games I have, and that's only from the last two years. Oh, yeah. And not even counting my digital purchases, either. Mm-mm. Nope. So, um, yeah. Obviously, this year, 
came to debut of this. This Nintendo Switch Lite, which is a literally, and I have felt this, lighter version of the regular Nintendo Switch. Oh, yeah. Uh, honestly, honestly, I have really enjoyed this system. It is probably one of the best systems I have ever played. Some of the great games that we played on here, Final Three Houses, obviously. Oh, one of the best games. Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh, yeah. Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Mario Odyssey, by the way. Uh, uh, Le Legends of Breath of the Wild. Duh. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, of course. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see, it should be all the games. Uh, Splatoon 2. Um, obviously the Pokemon games. Or oh, even the best, one of the best third-party game we know is Mario Rabbids The Kingdom Battle. Fun fact. Me and Ethan actually hated when we hated that at first when we heard about it. We were like, No, thank you. But once we saw the gameplay, we instantly changed our minds. It was because the gameplay went well. And, that, and it even looked like it was it was like five away, but actually, fun fact, the gameplay style is actually taken and based off an expiration from XCOM. Yeah, which is uh, not a technical RPG series, a uh, technical strategy series. Uh, but, yeah, I really like it. I was actually playing some Mario Rabbids earlier just to see how it was, and it's actually still pretty good, good from what I've been playing, so, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, that's really all that Nintendo's been up to this decade. It's really been a great roll, up and down roller coaster with Nintendo. Yeah. But, me and Ethan have stuck through and through, and we'll continue to until the day Nintendo goes to that party. Oh, yeah. Right, bud? Yep. Alright, so, next, talking about Sony. Of course, um, of course we got that long video going. Okay, so tell you what, we're going to cut this video, and then we'll continue on the next discussion video talking about Sony and Microsoft. Yes, well we got into them, and then maybe after that, maybe for me, I guess I guess I can just put my discussion about how I got into anime more in that decade. As well as me and my cartoon return as well. And then, of course, we'll close out, close out this decade video. Alright, see you in part two! See ya part two.